This is foam board, boys and girls. We're going to build a plane. A plane, I hear you say. That's right. Here, let me throw in some packing tape. Pick a colour, any colour. Now, these are sticks, hot glue sticks. You'll need some of those. You know what this is? The gun. No, it's not a stick up. What if for good measure, I'll throw in some gift cards? Is that enough? No, it's not the prize. It's to make it stronger. Could you build me something like this? Could you build me something like this? What about something like this? Maybe, just maybe, something like this. Well, it's all possible. Stay tuned, it's coming right up. Hey guys, it's Rick from Rick Chad RC. How are you going? This is what four pieces of foam board can achieve. Who would have thought that four pieces of foam board could turn out something like this? Now, I'm about to show you what I've put together. I've got to say, I've been inspired by Ed from Experimental Airlines. I've been following him for the last eight years. Uh, I haven't done anything about it because I've been so enthralled with my own helicopter. But uh, I finally decided to do a scratch build. I have scratch built before, but not like this. Not with foam like this alone and not with the techniques I've learned. So a big shout out to Ed from Experimental Airlines. Thanks a lot and do yourself a favor and check his YouTube channel out. But for now, I'm going to show you what I've put together and uh, I think you're going to be quite amazed because I've been quite amazed also. Stand by. This is the photon derivative. I call this the swordfish. It's based on the photon. Uh, the dimensions, the length, the wingspan, it's all based on the photon construction techniques and the measurements. But uh, I'll explain as I go along. I change mine slightly because of things that happened along the way while I was putting this all together. Now, when I first started making the tube, the fuselage tube, I actually made it too wide. So I didn't want to waste it and start again or start another. So I decided to keep the same tube and I ended up redesigning the shape. This is what I ended up doing. As you can see, I tapered the front end and I tapered the back end. To give it a bit more shape, make it look a bit more realistic, so it didn't look so tubular, if you know what I'm saying. Everything else about it, I've kept the same. I've got the uh, the winglets on the wing. Uh, I've got a five-inch cord with one and a half-inch ailerons here and here. I've got a 2200 kV motor at the front. I'm using a 6x3 propeller, not a 6x4. And the reason is the 6x3 gives me a little, little bit more thrust, approaching the 1000 grams of thrust, almost 990 actually. And this plane weighs almost 1200 grams. And that's why I didn't want to use a 6x4 prop. So the 6x3 gives me a little bit better ratio with uh, when it comes to power to weight ratio. And yeah, this is what I've come up with. This is four sheets of foam, everyone. Four sheets of foam. Two for the wings, two for the fuselage. And the leftover, I was able to make The, the back wing, the back tail, the rudder, and so on. 
So what you're looking at is basically foam board, packing tape, hot glue and some gift cards for extra strength along the way. I'll show you the underside as well. It's got a little section cut out at the back where the ailerons go. One for the elevator, one for the rudder, gift cards to hold it all in place with double sided scotch tape. It is absolutely amazing the way all of this goes together. Now I've also put reinforcing inside the fuselage around here where the two pieces join to get the length and the reinforcing that I used was gift cards. Two on the side, one on the top, one on the bottom. It's rock solid, not designed to fall apart when you have a bit of a, a bingle designed to be held together a bit more with a bit more rigidity but we'll find out what happens as uh, time goes on and as I continue to fly this I'm using carbon fiber tubes here and here for the for the wings to hold down the wings as you can see the elastic bands are in place I've got my little hatch over here, which I'll show you. It's my little hatch. All my radio gear inside. The battery goes in this section here. Let me just turn this around so I can show you. A little bit more maybe I'll take the wings off and show you a bit of a close-up without the wings being in the way that's my little hatch closes nicely I've got uh, I've put the I use the metal motor mount just like Ed from Experimental Airlines explained I've got some a gift card under here for strength. I've got a gift card under here for strength. So it's gonna do some belly landings. There's no wheels. Packing tape, hot glue, and gift cards. That's all it is. 60-inch wingspan, the wings fold in half. I'll show you how they come apart in a moment. And this is my little baby. I call the swordfish. For me, this is not the photon, the body's too wide. This is the swordfish. Well, that's what I'm calling mine anyway. underneath I've used two colors for the wings here you have it so you can see it in the in the sky you know when it's upside down you know when it's the right side up here we go four sheets a foam board everyone the only area that i used a piece of balsa block if you like was the front section where i put the motor mount so right over here i've got a gift card right at the front behind the gift card is a balsa block about half an inch thick the rest is all foam. 
Now I don't have a video of the construction for this one because I didn't really know how it was going to turn out myself when I was putting it together. But I can tell you everything goes together just as it's been explained. And when I say that, I mean the way Ed from Experimental Airlines shows you is the way I followed it. And I was amazed at how everything just falls into place. The foam is easy to cut. The packing tape is easy to lay in place, lay down. The foam is easy to bend. It's easy to fatigue. It's easy to get the shape. And I've already built my second one which is the Axon and I built the wings in like two hours on a Saturday morning I've got full construction video of that one I don't have one of this one but tell me what you think it's due for its maiden I haven't flown it yet but I'm looking forward to it and I can hardly wait Just turn it right around so you can see the back. If it wasn't for the folding wings, I probably wouldn't be able to put this in the car very easily. So thank God the wings fold. The body fits in the boot nicely. And uh, I'm looking forward to actually flying this as a glider, as a motor glider. And it's going to be fantastic. I, I can't, I cannot wait. This is what you can do with four pieces of foam, boys and girls. It doesn't even have to be this big when you start off, but you know... This is how I started, this is what I did. Like I said, I've scratch built before. I've used foam. No, I haven't. I've used balsa wood. I've used plywood. I've even used, well, I've used foam core wings, but I haven't built a wing like this, which is the arm and wing. I haven't built a fuselage like this, which is simple foam folded and folded, scored and folded. And this is what's this is what you can do. You know what? It's only fun. If you break it, if you crash it, you just build another tube, you just build another wing, and away you go. Now, the first one took me a lot longer to build because I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. But the second one, you do a lot quicker, and the third one, you do a lot quicker. You pay a little bit more attention to detail, they even look better than they do the first time around. Now, I paid a lot of attention to this. This was my first one. And yeah, this is my photon derivative, which I call the sortish. Okay, I'm going to take the uh, the wing off. Like so. Show you how this wing comes apart.
grab my carbon arrow shaft. And I'm going to put it in the end here. I've got some tape over the end so to prevent any splitting. Put it in the, uh, the hole that I've left there. Push. Now I made mine a bit more of a tighter fit. And let me check a bit more. Okay, as you can see, it's starting to happen. There's my fold, and there's my wing. How's that? Exactly like it was designed. Got my aileron leads and cords in the wing. Here we go. Easy to transport. Easy to put in the car when I need it again. Simply open it up like so. Now my aileron servos by the way. The cutouts with the push rods already in there. Folds like so. Put them at the field. I grab one of my other carbon arrow shafts again. Put it in one end. And push. Until it's halfway in, it's halfway there, the other one has come halfway out, and there you have it, the wing's holding, the two halves are there. what the wing looks like on its own. <clears throat> the packing tape creates a very nice shiny gloss finish as you can see and it's weatherproof. I take the two ends of the carbon arrow shafts out and I'm left with the wing ready to roll. Not bad, even if I do say so myself, not bad at all. This is the tail end section of the aeroplane. Now I'll go through what I've done here. Those dark blue areas, they represent gift card insertions. So what I've done is I've cut out a gift card to make the control horns for the elevator and for the rudder. Now the one in the middle holding up the vertical stabilizer, there's a gift card that's been folded at right angles coming up through the fuselage. Now the underside of that, which I'll show you later, is holding the elevator servo. And I'm simply using I'm simply using some scotch tape, double-sided scotch tape to do that. Now the vertical section is coming up through the fuselage and 
it has been hot glued to the vertical stabilizer and then I've simply covered all areas with a nicely cut square piece of cloth tape or duct tape. That section that we're looking at now is the rudder servo cutout. So once again, underneath the fuselage, I have hot glued a gift card to the underside of the body. And I have used double sided scotch tape to hold the servo in place. And I've simply made a cutout for the servo horn to come through. Now you can see in the center section here where the main wing sits, this is the area where the aileron servo leads come through the body. So I've got some extension servo leads coming from the receiver and I made a little incision at the back of the wing on the body and that area I simply connect when I'm at the field and the ailerons get plugged in like so and then I disconnect them once again when I finish flying these dark blue sections on the main wing once again are the aileron servos or rather they are the aileron control horns I've made them out of gift cards I've folded them at a 90 degree angle, I've inserted them through the aileron and I've covered them up with a square piece of duct tape or cloth tape. This is the underside of the plane, as you can see, a bit of a colour scheme happening there. You can see where I've made the incision for the aileron servos to fit through. Once again I've used duct tape or cloth tape to cover up the servos. The control horns once again made of gift card, one on each side, push rods still have to be inserted in this footage but they have already been inserted. This area here is the aluminium motor mount that I've made. So the electric motor bolts straight onto the aluminium motor mount which I've bent at right angles, 90 degrees with a slight angle of down thrust and then I secured that to the underside of the fuselage at the front with double sided scotch tape. It works wonders. I then added another piece of aluminium which I cut to shape and bent slightly just to protect the motor at the front section when it comes in for its belly landings. I've also got a gift card underneath the motor mount there for added strength. So the aluminium motor mount doesn't just get scotch taped to the underside of the foam, there's actually a gift card under there for added strength. This is the winglet that I chose to add on to the end of the wings as per the original design. Now I simply used some plastic that came from one of those do not disturb signs that you can buy from the hardware store. Uh, I bought mine from Bunnings and I simply cut it to shape and they are just stuck on using double sided scotch tape. I also made sure that I had the correct hole drilled in the correct place so that I could insert my carbon fiber arrow shaft to assemble and disassemble the wing. Not a bad look. Plus it stops the wing tips from scraping when you're landing on the belly. Here I'm just showing different angles and different perspectives of the aeroplane so you can see what it looks like from all angles. It happens to be on our outdoor table setting in the backyard. As I said, 60 inch wingspan, 45 inch fuselage, 
proper airfoil in the main wing just simply flat out cut foam for the rear and vertical stabilizers elastic bands to hold onto the wing may be a bit old-fashioned but at least there's a bit of play if you land hard the wing has room to move this is the hatch where you have access to insert the battery and the other electronics the ESC and the receiver very very neat indeed all finished off with the cloth tape or the duct tape just showing one final view of the aeroplane from all angles as I said I've called mine the swordfish I think the body is much too wide to be the uh, photon but I'm really happy with the overall design and the overall shape this is the motor a Turnergy 28 26 6 turn 2200 kilovolt electric motor from Hobby King I'm using a 6x3 prop which gives me 990 grams of thrust on a 3S the plane weighs about 1200 grams all up ready to fly this is just another piece of footage of the aeroplane in my backyard I guess it simulates what it might look like on the grass when you take it down to the park there's a bit of a breeze blowing it's moving gently with the wind I think it looks spectacular and I think it's going to look fantastic in the air as well as I said you don't have to start by building one this big uh, I just wanted something stable with a large wingspan I wasn't after speed I'm happy to watch my aeroplanes glide through the air they don't have to zoom past uh, but it's got the power to boot if you want to do a loop and a roll and so on just showing you another angle another perspective of the front section with the motor the good old Turnergy 28 26 2200 kilovolt a very reliable motor indeed that's the hatch again from a different angle here is the hatch once again I've opened it up as if I'm at the airfield on the grass I'm about to put the battery in such and such da 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 and she'll be ready to fly elastic band around there if I need to just to keep it closed thanks for watching I hope you've enjoyed this video I've certainly enjoyed making it I hope I've inspired some of you out there the way I've been inspired and uh, by all means have a go create your own design you won't regret it